Ava Provadal and uh, I love the Human Library. I'm the organizer of another Human Library in London. The, the concept started in Denmark in 2000 and it's a spread all over the world and I think what made it successful is it creates a safe place, safe situation where two people can openly have a conversation around topics that you might normally be speaking about with someone you don't know or even with people you know very well. So some topics may be, how can I say, imbued with taboos and shame or just uh, something, or it's very personal. So most of the times we don't, we tend not to speak to people who we don't know or who are very different from us about things. And we do all have all stereotypes and prejudice most of the times around things that we don't know. So what this place does is it brings together people so that they can learn from each other in a respectful and constructive way. So far I've read I'm a second generation immigrant. Um, I've read I'm the granddaughter of a Russian refugee and I think it's a really, really amazing opportunity to do so and just delve a little bit deeper into people's life and just to see the contrasts, but the, a lot of similarities of our, our lives. I thought this is just a really nice idea. It's just a brilliant idea to kind of break down barriers. And because also people are quite reserved, you feel you don't dare to ask people about things. And this gives a you know, license for people just to talk and also to ask questions and it's only for a short period, so it's quite in a safe environment. My name's Julian Thompson. I'm a book, and my book is Bostonian. I've been telling the story of why I Brexited and uh, the reasons behind that, and then also how we're trying to get Boston back together by uh, uh, cohesion and uh, uh, just generally pulling people together, groups together, and uh, making things work for Boston. Today I've been a, a book as a clinical trials manager. So the best conversations I had was actually talking to somebody who'd been uh, sort of indirectly affected with one of the trials I, I, I've uh, sort of run uh, or been part of, and he was very grateful and happy to have met somebody from the other side of a medical side. And he was thanking me uh, for uh, uh, sort of. Um, being part of that process and that was unexpected and it was just we had a hug at the end of it all it was a, yeah it was a very nice uh, sort of uh, way to end the uh, conversation with them my name is Becca Garrity and I'm a book called Quaker in the one reading session I've had so far uh, the the reader had ideas of Quakers 150 years out of date because it's very different nowadays and I quite enjoyed explaining to her that we're not those weird things anymore. She thought that we were still very Christian and very fussy and very traditional and didn't, wouldn't drink and wouldn't do all those things, which none of, none of which has been true for a long time. I read a book about, about priesthood and so I had quite a lot of, I spoke a lot about um, and, and heard a lot about spirituality and religion today and one of the things that I learned that what's important in the relationship with people is intimacy, it's creativity and understanding and a sense of connectedness which create a one, creates a oneness between us. At the moment we're in a stage in our society and stuff where there's lots of negativity floating around about immigrants and very often when it's actually mentioned audibly or it's written in text there's always a very negative stereotype and undertone going through so something like this really really truly celebrates the sort of diversity and the contribution that immigrants and it in many many um, occasions People don't have to look too far in their own family histories to realise that we're all immigrants. Um, and the wonderful thing that we have, if we, if we just dig a little bit deeper, we do find there's a lot more commonality and, and richness that that brings within itself. 
it, it sort of reaffirms that uh, living here, you don't always get the full picture. You get a picture that's presented by the media, and that isn't always the, the full picture. And if it's presented in a, in a, the right way through uh, talking to each other and an understanding of each other without actually putting each other down for what their beliefs are, then you can uh, arrive at an understanding on both sides. We wound up having a long conversation about a word, a particular word she chose, which I realized was the perfect word for something that I'd been looking for. Grace is a word that I'm very familiar with in religious terms, although not in the, in the traditional Christian sense. That same sense of something gracious and beautiful that one perceives hmm. is something what we recognize in each other. And her word for it, which I hadn't used in that particular way, was just right. But it's just been really, really fascinating how varied each and every one of our lives can be, you know, and the sort of differences that we have and, and that spark. I'm constantly intrigued by our uniqueness and when we allow to flourish in that uniqueness, I think, yeah. It's a perfect little project and it should just spread everywhere. But I've really, really enjoyed both of the books I've read and very much would like to read some more and just see, and I think it's a really superb idea, this human library.